Hey guys, Sean here. Thanks for tuning in. Hope everyone's getting some clear skies. So we have a new version of Pixinsight. Uh, that is version 1.8.8-6, uh, which was released a couple days ago. I will put a link in the description to this forum post that Juan made, uh, which details all of the uh, changes and improvements. Uh, something to note is this is not just a bug fix uh, version. This is um, a lot of uh, new new features have been added to it. A lot of changes have been made to it. Uh, improvements have been made to it. So uh, it goes, goes far beyond just being a bug fix version. Uh, that's for sure. Um, let's have a look at... Uh, I'm going to just go over some of the more notable uh, things that have changed in it or been added to it. And um, I'll leave the forum post, uh, like I said, up to you to, to have a look at and read through everything uh, in, in greater detail. But let's just have a look at some of the, uh, the more notable things that have changed or been added to it. So the first thing that uh, is really fantastic to see is the uh, StarNet process is now part of Pixinsight and you can find it under process and mask generation and you can find it here. Uh, so StarNet is now part of Pixinsight. And the first thing that when you open it, I've already got it done, but when you first open it, these two lines here will be blank and you'll need to uh, locate these files uh, that it's asking for. So you simply just select to uh, locate the files. You're going to go to Program Files, Pixinsight uh, Library, and you're going to select the appropriate files. And then once you're done, you can use StarNet um, as you normally would. So that is uh, one of the first notable improvements uh, or additions to uh, Pixinsight. The other thing that I thought was notable was the uh, local, uh, sorry, adaptive normalization. Um, local normalization uh, is available in Pixinsight and has been for a while now, and it uh, takes care of um, any uh, um, harsh uh, gradients that you might have, as example, in the image, uh, normalizes the image. And uh, it, it was rather, um, it was a rather involved process to go through that routine. Uh, so what they've done is they have added in a new normalization called adaptive normalization, and it's much easier to use. Um, and it's an alternative to local, uh, local normalization. Nor local normalization, can't say that. Um, so it's an alternative to it, which is a lot easier to use and a lot quicker to use. Uh, so you might wanna check that out. This is just a quick test that I did here. Um, so basically this, this image here was not adaptive normalized and this one was adaptive normalized. So you can see that there's more of a stronger gradient occurring in this image uh, versus the one that I applied the adaptive normalization to. So it, it works quite well. It can be very effective, especially when there's extremes occurring in the light frames. And um, it can help normalize uh, those light frames uh, so that they're more consistent with one another. So that is the uh, other more notable improvement. Now, uh, where do you find local uh, or adaptive normalization? Uh, that is under process and image integration and you will find it um, right uh, under the normalization tab and you can select it right there adaptive normalization so uh, when you're going when you're at a point of uh, integrating your images this isn't available the adaptive normalization is not available in the um, uh, weighted uh, batch pre-processing script uh, that's something that you'd have to, you could use the way to batch pre-processing script to calibrate your images but and register them, but when you go to integrate them, um, you would have to do that manually yourself uh, using the image integration tool, and then you could select adaptive normalization um, in that process and, uh, and uh, apply it, have it applied to your light frames. Uh, so, so that's something to note that it's not in the way to batch pre-processing. Now, um, so that's where you can find adaptive normalization if you want to try using it on your light frames when you go to uh, uh, stack them, integrate them. Weighted batch pre-processing is now at version 1.4.8 and they've added the ability to apply image registration uh, or not apply image registration. 
and uh, the subframe weighting is now done the computation is done before registration uh, they've taken out the ability to uh, to not do it before registration uh, the other changes that we've got occurring in let me just refer to my notes here the uh, other changes that the process icons um, have changed a little bit in the sense that there's now a grid pattern associated with it which you can set up so you can line things up nice it'll snap basically to uh, the grid pattern that you define and that can be defined in the uh, global preferences right here an icon grid spacing so you can increase or decrease that you set it at zero if you don't want to use it um, or you can uh, set it its defaults at eight and uh, its main purpose is to just allow you to uh, line things up uh, more evenly uh, for that nice clean look that we all like to uh, to have when we're working in our workspaces so it sort of just locks in as you can see it kind of just um, snaps to and keeps things organized another addition to this new version of pix insight is the ability to clone uh, process icons so you can select the process icons that you want to I want to make a duplicate of clone them and you can go down here and select clone and then you've got some available to you and you can add those to different workspaces simply by dragging them and dropping them into the different workspaces down here the pixel math has been uh, changed in the sense of its appearance it now looks a little different um, nothing too uh, nothing too extreme but it is uh, it does present itself a little different looking if you're saving a if you're going to save a project they now have a better uh, compression algorithm that they're using and that codec is uh, the uh, lz4 or lz4 depending where you're from uh, dash hc and that one will is available by default now under uh, compression when you're saving a project and finally a little bird told me that the process uh, dbe dynamic background extraction uh, is going to be updated new and improved that's coming down the line in uh, future uh, updates as well as the um, uh, star mask uh, star mask is also going to be updated as well and uh, improved upon so we're going to be looking forward to those changes uh, those updates as they come along and uh, that's about it for uh, the most uh, notable changes uh, like i said follow the link in the description to the uh, forum post which uh, details a uh, few more uh, changes that have occurred um, in uh, things like dynamic PSF there's been some changes made to dynamic PSF if uh, you do it the manual way uh, using dynamic PSF if not um, you can simply like most of us are probably doing uh, do it using the uh, script the PSF image script which is a lot easier to use um, but uh, uh, that is another change that uh, that has been uh, done, improved upon, improvement in PixInsight, and uh, you'll be able to find out all of that, uh, de all of those details and more by visiting the forum post. So I'll put that link, as I said, in the description so you guys can uh, hop on over to that and check it out. Okay, thanks very much for tuning in. Appreciate it. Uh, as I said, I hope everyone's getting some clear skies, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Take care, everyone.